Now I've opened a browser on my PC and I'm going to type in the IP address 192.168.1.127 because that's the IP address of the Yun. So let's press return on that. And now we get back to um, this server web page that's actually coming from the Arduino Yun. So I need to type in the password Arduino. And now we're back here again with this uh, configure panel which we saw when we did the initial setup. So if I hit configure there. Now this configuration I'm not going to change because it's all been done. Um, the Wi-Fi network that the Arduino logs into is all set. But there's a link up here which is the advanced configuration panel brackets Lucy. So let's click on that. And this is where we go into an enormous uh, amount of configuration options for the server on the Arduino. And there are lots and lots of menu options here, um, including status and system and network. And so let's look under status for a moment because there's some quite interesting uh, real time graphs that you can bring up. And so this is showing you uh, the CPU load that the uh, Arduino's uh, Linux processor is undergoing. Uh, you can also, let's have a look. Yes, you can also look at some uh, real-time wireless graphs. So here we've got signal and noise showing up there from the Wi-Fi module. And down at the bottom, we've got the phi rate, in other words, the data transfer rate. So at the moment, not much is being transferred. We're just getting little blips of activity. But you can see here that there's a huge amount of processing power uh, inside this Arduino, inside the Linux part of this Arduino. Um, let's just pick something at random. Firewall there, there's a whole series of firewall rules. So this shows the complexity of software that's in this Arduino Yun. Now when I spent £55 on this Arduino, I thought to myself, well this must do really clever things like be able to switch hardware, um, you know, like that red LED there, by taking commands from the internet. I should be able to be anywhere in the world and send commands to this Arduino to actually control physical hardware. And in fact, if you look at the box that this thing comes in, it says explore the internet of things within minutes of switching it on, jump right in. And that's really a clue to what this Arduino is intended to be. It's intended to be the Internet of Things. So let's take things a little bit further than just blinking LEDs and try and get involved in this Internet of Things. So I'm going to open from the examples. And of course, with the Yun, there are a whole new load of examples. And I'm going to look at the Bridge Library. And there's an example in Bridge simply called Bridge. So let's load that one in and there's the sketch open there. I'll just maximize that on the screen. Now there's a bit of blurb at the beginning of this sketch and it says the Arduino Yun Bridge example. It demonstrates how you can create your own API when using REST style calls through the browser. Now Wikipedia tells me that uh, REST stands for Representational, representational state transfer. Well, that doesn't help a lot, so let's see how it actually works. The way this works is that we can use a series of different URLs. Um, it's going to be 192.168.1.127 in my case, forward slash Arduino, forward slash, and if you look at the top one, digital forward slash 13. And that will enable me to read the state of digital pin 13. Now the next one down, which says digital slash 13 slash 1, will actually allow me to control the state of digital pin 13, which is the one with the LED on it. So I'll be able to use a browser, and theoretically you could do that from anywhere in the world, to control the state of these digital ports. So let's um, compile this uh, sketch and send it to the Arduino Yun. So I've compiled that sketch, sent it to the Arduino Yun, and the D13 light, which is marked there, L13, has come on permanently. So let's see if we can now control that using a web browser. So there's the URL to interrogate digital pin 13 from a browser, and I'm gonna press return on that. 
and it comes up with an authentication box. You have to type in a username and a password. Now I can tell you what that username and password is. Username is root and password is Arduino. But there's another way to get around this. So I've logged back into the Arduino Yun using its IP address simply 192.168.1.127 and I'm back to this configuration page and right at the bottom there's this thing REST API Access and at the moment it's set to with password. Now in the um, getting started instructions it says change it to open but what it doesn't tell you is that that has an immediate effect. You don't need to hit configure and restart so I can now send these REST API URLs and control the Arduino Yun. So I've now gone back to IP address slash Arduino slash digital slash 13. I've pressed return and it's given me the message. Pin D13 is set to a one. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. Pin D13 is set to a one. The red LED is on. So now let's change that URL. So slash 13 slash zero. So what I'm doing now is I'm telling it to change digital pin 13 to a zero. I'm going to press, I brought the keyboard up, so I'm going to press return and show you what happens on the Arduino Yun. Press return and the lamp goes off. So I've actually controlled the state of that digital pin from the web browser and I'm getting a message now, pin D13 set to zero. So let's do the same thing, setting it back to a one. Let's put a one in there and press return. And I get the message pin D13 set to a one. If I look down here, the LED has come back on. So that's browser control of the Arduino Yun's hardware. Now I'm doing this on my local area network, 192.168.127.1.127, uh, but there's nothing to stop me patching a route through my uh, firewall in the router there and allowing internet access to this Arduino Yun so that you could be sitting with a browser anywhere in the world and controlling the IO ports of this Arduino. Now here's another one 192.168.1.127 slash Arduino slash analog slash zero and then I press return and it's saying pin A0 the analog input reads analog 359. Now that's just a sort of random number based on the fact that uh, input A0 and the inputs there are marked with these nice stickers is floating and uh, just picking up um, a, a sort of random voltage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to link analog A0 with one of these link pins down to ground. So now if I refresh the page on my browser, so I'm going to do that just by hitting refresh. You can see it says pin A0 reads analog zero. Terrific. So that's now the analog value set to zero. Let's move that link pin to five volts. So that should read the maximum analog value of 1023. Refresh. And there it is. Pin A0 reads analog 1023. And there's one other thing I can do because we've actually got 3.3 volts here. So that will read some sort of mid value somewhere between zero and five volts. Let's just try it, refresh, and we're getting analog A0 reads 675. So this is fine. We've got uh, control of the Arduino from a browser, theoretically from anywhere in the world. But um, Arduino is all about simple, simplicity, creating um, devices and sketches with the minimum of uh, fuss. So let's go back to the getting started page and there's a section on connecting to internet services with Tembu. Tembu is a third party service and if we go to the Tembu getting started page we can see that there's a whole thing all about the Arduino Yun here. Let's click on that and what you can do is you can do quite clever things like if a, a digital pin on your Yun changes state, you can get it to go to Tembu and have Tembu send a tweet. Or you can get it to go to Tembu and have Tembu send an email. So this takes things a little bit further because you could perhaps connect one of these digital inputs to 
a switch mounted on a door and every time someone walks through that door it sends you an email. So this is one way that you can take this thing further, you can do more internet connectivity related stuff using this third party service Tembu. So that's really about uh, as far as I've got uh, so far with the Arduino Yun. It is an expensive device but I mean clearly it's capable of uh, incredible connectivity um, with the internet. And of course I intend to do more with the Arduino Yun um, whenever time permits but I hope that you've enjoyed this brief introduction to this latest in the Arduino family, the Arduino Yun. <laughs>